So, romance isn't always the highest priority in video games, and as such, it can sometimes end up in the backseat. Before we begin, be sure to subscribe to Mojo Plays and click on the links in the description to vote on upcoming content. Lately, with franchises like Mass Effect and The Witcher taking video game storytelling to the next level, romance and romance options have become great features in high-profile games. But once upon a time, the closest we'd get to romance was going to several wrong castles or chasing after a gang who punched a girl in the stomach and carried her off. Long story short, romance and companionship in video games have come a long way and there are a lot of great couples in gaming now. Oh, oh so sorry! <laughs> sorry. That being said, there are a fair share of couples that should definitely see other people, the worst offender being Sonic the Hedgehog and Princess Elise. Now, if you're not familiar with Sonic 06, that's good. There's a pretty good reason it never got an HD re-release. In case you're curious, here's the TLDR version. Sonic 06 really sucks. It friggin' sucks hard, dude. However, its greatest, most cringe-inducing factor is its attempt at romance. And, um, no, it's not even because of the whole hedgehog human thing. Now then, are you okay? I'm so glad that you came. Let's be honest, this isn't the first interspecies relationship in a video game, and it's probably not the last. Such a pairing, hear me out, has actually been done kind of well in the past, and will probably continue to be a thing in pop culture as long as anthropomorphic creatures keep having likable personalities. I'll bake you a carrot cake. <laughs> What's really wrong with Sonic and Elise? Well, for one thing, before any romance begins, you gotta like the characters. Our favorite pairings are made up of characters that we, as the viewer or player, actually enjoy spending time with. We want them to be functional with or without their partner. So character development is key when trying to create our soon-to-be-one true pairings. Sonic is generally likable. Unfortunately, Sonic 06 takes away everything that made him great. The way past cool hedgehog who's always looking for an adventure? Well, the Sonic 06 version is almost a new character. Though, whew, he tries to be fun. Oh, how he tries. I'm Sonic! Sonic the Hedgehog! Then there's Elise, whose primary role is to be rescued and fit in that sheltered princess trope. The princess characteristics have been used time and time again. Talk to Princess Peach and Disney, for examples. But what Peach and other princesses have that Elise doesn't is a bit of charm. There's even a bit of a sense of personality with them. <laughs> Imagine that. Even if we've seen their story before, we generally like them as characters, or even archetypes, so we come back for more. Elise is basically a cardboard cutout who follows the already paved steps of the damsel in distress trope. So she's really boring to watch with nothing else added to make her more likable. Then there's the fact that there's basically no chemistry between her and the blue hedgehog thing. Nice smile. <laughs> Sonic is basically the only one who shows Elise the ways of the world, and it's supposed to be sweet, but you're kind of left with the feeling of, man, I've seen this done better in a bunch of other stories. So the interactions are about as follows. Elise needs to be saved. Sonic saves her. They talk. She gets kidnapped. Sonic saves her again. They talk. It's just too by the numbers and too repetitive, and it's really the only interaction that these two have with one another. It leaves us feeling frustrated because neither character is really learning their lesson together. Unless if you count that manufactured smile or ugh, the running lesson. The best couples have a sense of balance, a sense of, you know, give and take. Link might have to save Zelda throughout the course of the Zelda franchise, but not only is there a connection between them, Zelda also helps in any way she can throughout the journey. From the mid-90s onward, it didn't feel too one-sided, and more importantly, it didn't feel too forced. Link wants to be there for Zelda, and Zelda believes in him even when she doesn't believe in herself. I entrust you with the bow of light, a powerful weapon in the face of evil. That's definitely not something you could say about Sonic and Elise. There's one basic question to ask with any couple you come across. Why are they attached to each other? This is an especially vital question to pose for a character like Sonic, who was created to be the anti-Mario. Saving princesses wasn't really his thing, he was too cool for that. The few love interests he's had range from a freedom-fighting princess who was never in the games, and for lack of a better word, a stalker he runs away from. To see Sonic interested in romance is kind of already a tough sell, but it could work with the right character, and by the way, that assessment works both ways. In the end, the most infuriating thing about these two comes at the end of their story, because it turns out that none of it matters. You spend the entire time watching this poor attempt at a love story, only to have it retconned by the end of the game. Sonic tells Elise to just smile before she blows out a time-resetting candle, which restarts the events of the game, minus the fiery big bad guy. So now the couple no longer knows who the other person is, and they go on with their lives, so 
What exactly was the point? Unlike Link and Zelda, who themselves reset and change, Sonic and Elise will never see each other again. And what we end with is effectively the most terrible part of an awful game, and our pick for the worst video game romance of all time. But it felt so familiar somehow. Thanks for watching Mojo Plays. Be sure to subscribe and click on the link in the description below to check out our suggestion page and vote on what content you'd like to see us cover next.